Hello. Uh, in this video, I want to give a brief overview of some updates to Adobe Lightroom. Um, for the most part, the app has stayed pretty consistent over the years, uh, but there's been some recent adjustments that they've made to it. They've kind of uh, rearranged the layout a little bit. Um, some tools are not in exactly the same place they used to be, and um, they've added some new features as well. So. Um, to supplement um, some of the other things that um, we've covered uh, on this app. I wanted to just show, um, for the, especially for those who might be using an older version, um, if you upgrade yours, um, some things won't be where you expect them to be. So um, let's maximize this. Uh, so the basic tab is essentially the same. Um, this looks pretty similar. Uh, you'll notice there's a new texture slider. Uh, that's pretty self-evident what it does. You turn it up to the right, it makes texture pop a bit more. Um, if you turn to the left, it kind of smooths things out a bit, but this photo's got lots of great texture in it, so I wanted to enhance it a little bit. Um, that's the only new thing here. Uh, so the basic looks pretty much the same, uh, but let me show you where you'll notice something uh, that's quite a bit more different. Um, here in the HSL panel, um, we still have the ability to make adjustments to just the hue or just the saturation or just the luminance of a particular color channel. It's a very handy thing to have. Um, you know, there's a lot of blue in this photo and there's a lot of warm colors, so I can deal with those separately, which is nice to, um, you know, in the past when, um, you only had global adjustments, you would adjust one thing and then you might introduce a new problem somewhere else. So this gives us the ability to fine tune our adjustments so that we don't create new problems to have to solve. So this looks pretty similar um, so far. Uh, if you recall from older versions, this used to say HSL color and black and white. Um, the black and white function, you could toggle, you could click black and white, um, and this would turn into what is now called the black and white mixer. But how do you find the black and white mixer? Um, this is where I'm not sure that it was an improvement to do this. Let's collapse this and go back to the basic tab. To convert the image to black and white, we now have to go back to the basic tab. Click here. Let's convert it to black and white. Let's collapse that. We go back. Now this becomes, it was uh, HSL and color. Now it becomes black and white. So it used to be you could toggle between these two right here and not have to scroll back or anything like that. Now you've got to go back to the basic tab, um, click on this, then jump back down here. To me, that's unnecessary hopping back and forth and scrolling. Um, I wish they just left it right here. Uh, but otherwise, it functions the same way that it always did. So we can adjust particular color channels here. Uh, let's find the blue since there's a lot. So we can change the luminosity of specific color channels, which is nice. Um, I pretty much always use that when I um, am working with a digital black and white image. Um, and you can also do targeted adjustments. So um, this is something I wish they would label it because a lot of people don't realize that it's a tool they can use. They never touch it. They just think it's a, a decoration. I think it's decorative. They just leave it alone. But um, this helps if I don't know exactly what color it is I want to adjust. I just know, well, it's in this area. I don't know what colors that's made up of. I can click and drag on it and um, it can analyze and know what that is. And so evidently it must have a lot of blue in it, which makes sense. It's in the kind of the shadow side here. Shadows tend to be cooler. Um, but I can click around and change the luminosity of particular areas based on what colors they're made of. It, it can sample that and it knows what they are. Um, so there's a little bit of a difference there. Just to turn this into black and white and be able to use the black and white mixer, you have to go to basic tab. Uh, you can't do it right here anymore. You have to go back here. Let's go back to color though. Um, collapse the basic adjustment. Um, but otherwise, uh, for the most part, this is how you remember it. This used to have a different name. It's been changed to color grading. You could do some, um, uh, what some people call split filtering um, or split, excuse me, split toning. 
And um, this is kind of how filters work on Instagram, except that it's a preset. But we can um, add an overlay of color to our highlights, shadows, um, midtones, excuse me, midtones, highlights, shadows. Um, we can access all three of them at once. If we click here, if we click here, it'll show us just the shadows. Um, then we could go maybe just to the midtones, just the highlights. And then this is a little bit different. This would be more of an old style um, global adjustment where it's going to add this overlay of color to the entire image. Um, your typical Instagram filter is usually something like um, maybe adding some warmth to the highlights and some cool tones of the shadow. So you just click and drag to dial it in. You can des uh, decide whether you want that color that you've added to um, how light or dark do you want it to be. So it could be kind of a, a pale wash of color that you add to it, or it could be a really saturated. So it's sort of a contrast brightness adjustment to the color overlay that you add to it. Uh, let's add some mid-tones, some more warmth to this, um, or we could cool it off either way. Um, then if we scroll down a little bit, we can decide basically um, how strong do we want this effect. We can turn it up all the way or have it be just a real subtle adjustment to it. Um, so there's a blending and then balance, we can skew it more towards the warm end or more towards the cool end of things. So uh, I would say this is an improvement over the uh, split toning options that we had before, but they call this color grading. Um, for people who are familiar with video production, you know, that term color grading is used a lot. So uh, it's more like how, what you would experience in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is used for video editing. So there's that. Um, another thing, this is a really subtle thing. There's this, these little buttons here. Um, these do something. They're not labeled. You have to hover over it to see what it does. This um, turns these effects on or off. So we just did some color grading to it. I can click that. It turns that adjustment off. So think of this as being kind of like in Photoshop when you have a layer, you can make that layer visible um, or you can, you can toggle it um, so that it's not visible and you don't see the effect it makes. This is kind of like that. Um, it's the closest equivalent I can think of. But we can do that for all of these except for the basic tab. Um, so if you happen to accidentally click one of these and you wonder why am I not seeing my adjustment, it's because you accidentally just disabled it. Um, so be beware of that. Uh, there's some other um, things that have been added. Uh, for instance, here the masking tool, um, that's going to require a whole other video uh, because there's quite a, quite a few new features in there and some really powerful things. There's also some, some tools that you'll recognize that you might notice are missing um, that you don't see up in this panel here anymore. They're all collapsed into this masking tool. But as I said, that's going to require a whole other video just on this because there's a lot that's been added to it. It's quite a bit different. Um, but I hope that's helpful. Hopefully um, it's gotten you a little bit up to speed on some of the um, newest little tweaks that Adobe has made to Lightroom. And um, hopefully you're not stumbling around confused anymore wondering where your favorite tools have gone. They're still here. Um, they're just updated a little bit and slightly different layout. Uh, but I hope that's been helpful for you. And if you have any questions, as usual, uh, feel free to email me and I will get an answer back to you as soon as I can.